I am now super, super, super cognizant of how hard sometimes people make you work to hire them and what a barrier that is. Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. (laughs) And inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. Welcome back to So Here's My Story. I'm Jody. I'm Elliot. And we've started doing something a little bit different here at So Here's My Story. We've we've started recording the story first, and then we're going to come back and record the intro. And we're doing that because we want to be able to give you a little bit of a sense right in this first, you know, 30 seconds of whether or not you want to stick around. <laughs> Which of course <laughs> whether the we're worth is it. yes, but I think I'd frame it as why you want to stick why around. Why you want to stick around. And so. I'll tell you in this one, and I, I really liked your your story because what it said to me or it made me think about is the unintended consequence of a sales process, a very well-intentioned sales process Mm -hmm. and how people tend to be or could be losing customers they never even knew they had just because of how they've set up what I think of as the sales onboarding process. So I think it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we'll get to that in just a second. Um, I do want to just a couple quick announcementsies kinds of things. <laughs> Re- using real words would be good. Announcements. But whatever. Announcements-ies. <laughs> so last week we recorded live in New York, which was just an absolute just blast, blast yeah. total blast. It was a great time at the National Association of Broadcasters. And um, I partly because of that, I'm not, but we have a bunch of people joining the Facebook group in the past week. So yeah, we've that was had, great um, to see. so hello to Chris Mullet, to John Amato to Marilyn Murphy, um, Elena Cobez, and Alice Daly. Yeah. Are all brand new folks in the Facebook Welcome group. Welcome to the group. So um, hop on in if you have not. If you go to so here's my story.com, you can find all sorts of very, very easy links to get to the Facebook group to listen on whatever device you have. We have a great new big button there that says listen here. And where whether you're listening on an Android or an iPhone or on a tablet, it will take you straight to the most efficient way to listen on your device. So we are making it easy. We are making it easy. (laughs) All right. Shall we begin? We can. So here's my story. My um, very overwhelmed, frazzled story. (laughs) Okay. You sound overwhelmed. (laughs) Do I? Yeah. Can you see it in my eyes? A little bit. Yes. Yeah. Another um, reason why we should have video. um, Or not. Or not. Or not. Maybe it depends. Maybe not today. Okay. So so here is my story. Um, I have been, it's been a really good quarter for me. And, you know, we, we've talked before how, um, you know, every solution comes with a new set of problems and there's, there's just a lot going on right now. And so whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed, my go-tos are looking down my to-do list for anything that I can delegate, whether I already have someone to delegate it to, or whether I need someone to delegate it to. Mm-hmm. And I, I had this sense of there were a bunch of things I could get off my plate at the moment. There were things that had to be done by me, but in for some, so I made a list of specifically those, and then I divided that list into things that had to be done by me because truly I am the only one who can do them, or had to be done by me just because I don't either have the right person or I don't, I would have to like pull together information for so then that person could do the thing or right. whatever. So, and that was that's one of my go tos of like, how can I have other people help me out of this pit? <laughs> It feels like I am digging more and more deeply into every day. And so so that usually works for me. Here's what happened. So I had this couple of types of people that I needed, either a freelance, one you know, was a freelancer, one was kind of a service provider, one was I need a, a kind of a par- very part-time personal assistant mm-hmm. service or a person or something. So for all three of those buckets, I found a way to reach out to someone to try and get that need taken care of. And hysterically, <laughs> every single one of those, the person or organization or whatever it was, w- was very happy to hear from me. Sure. And then proceeded to give me like a project that I had to do in order to get them in, to hire them and to, to get them in place and or to make it work or, or and, and one of them actually I had to like fill out this giant form before I could even talk to somebody and I just I, I don't know I was somewhere between like hysterically laughing and possibly kind of ragey. <laughs> 
<laughs> not even ragey. I just like this. It, it sort of felt like I was drowning and I was trying to get a, uh, a like a life preserver. And somebody's like, sure, just fill out these 12 forms in triplicate and then we'll send you a life preserver. I'm like, I'm kind of busy right now. <laughs> you know, we'll see what I what I was thinking is that you're in a hole and somebody just handed you a shovel. As, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Here, is this helpful? And actually, the metaphor that I ended up sharing with one of them was I said, look, you have a really wonderful service, but it's kind of like your service is helping uh, hoarders and you go and you knock on the door and I crack the door only only like a few inches wide because there's so much stuff behind my door. I can't even open it far enough to let you in. I was like, you need to have a service that like helps me physically, helps me clear, clear. you know, there has to be an entry mm -hmm. point that not only doesn't hand me a box of other stuff <laughs> to put in my house, but maybe takes some stuff out or helps me clear enough space that then I can. And, and I will say, I got to back up for a second. I'm not, I'm not not empathetic. I, I get that they need that information from me, but a simple, one simple tiny tweak that I shared with all of them because I was so frustrated is like interview me, get me on the phone. And, and I mean, maybe some people are happy filling out the form and have the time, but I was reaching out in these desperate little slivers of time, often on my phone. Um, I, I just couldn't fill out forms and whatnot. If they would have just gotten on the phone with me and asked me those questions and, and been taking notes and then coming back later, I don't know. It, it's just, I, I am now super, super, super cognizant of how hard sometimes people make you work to hire them and what a barrier that is. Yeah. You know, it, it was funny because I was writing notes as you were talking because a number of, of different things occurred to me. One is in your hoarder metaphor, if they had, if the first thing that that person did, once you managed to clear out enough space and climb over enough things to open the door a crack. If the first thing they did is help you just open the door another two centimeters, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that, that the first thing they did is clear out your entire house. No. They just, if they, if you could see a small victory, it's kind of like if you've ever gone to, it, kinda, it reminded me, this is years ago. Um, I was actually at a client meeting and I started it was a new client and I started sweating profusely and I um, always just how you want to feel just how I want to feel. And they were talking, I'm sure about something that was important to them. And all I was thinking is don't throw up, don't throw up, don't throw up. <laughs> anyway. So right after this meeting, I drove myself to GBMC and because I had what I thought sure was appendicitis and it turned out to be a kidney stone, but I didn't know. But anyway, hmm. But I'm in the emergency room and they start, they handed me a boatload of forms and I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> but I realized, A, they need that information. And B, if I had come in with a gunshot wound, they probably would have just taken me right back. Hopefully. So they might, so triage, but to your client and to right. you in this situation, everything is a gunshot wound, right? You yes. just need... Well, yeah. Something. Well, so if you well, and that that's a great point. Uh, this this probably doesn't this this rant that I am on at the moment maybe uh, and maybe not. I'd have to think about it. Maybe it applies less if your business is selling copiers or or something that I don't know. I was trying to think of something that doesn't have a sense. Well, either a doesn't have a sense of urgency. B doesn't specifically cater to people who are already overwhelmed and yeah. underwater. You know that that was the part that felt particularly hysterical. Um, and and so to keep going back to the hoarder metaphor, finding a way, even if it doesn't solve a problem, even if it was just here, let me help you get that stuff that's right behind the door, and even just set it out here in this giant plastic container I have, where I'll hold on to it, and so we can just have enough space to sit down and talk. Like, it doesn't have to even solve the problem; it just has to make it easier to get started. Uh, that, that even that would be would be simple. The other way I saw it show up a couple of times was in order to get started, to, to, to find some way to get moving, I had to make a bunch of intricate, not super clear choices. And, and you know, and the confused mind says, no, I, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. I get halfway through it. And then there'd be a choice of like, which one of these things do you want? And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't understand damn what the difference in those are. And right. I don't know how to figure it out. Uh, forget it. I'll come back later. And then I drift off. And it, it, it was fascinating from a business, the business consultancy part of my brain was just imagining the number of clients who drift off into the sunset at those points of either frustration or, or just overwhelm or like I, another example came to mind from years ago, my husband and I want to review all of our insurances, our, you know, our, our, not our life insurance, not that one, but, um, you know, our homeowners and our car and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I found someone who will take a look at everything we have because we got it a bajillion years ago and haven't looked at it. And I'm very excited to do that. But the first thing they sent me was, and I'm not exaggerating, like a 35 page 
discovery audit form where Which I'm, I'm sure to, would yield a lot of great information. No, abs- and I get that it's yeah. all information. They, they need to know all those things. Eventually. But if they want, if, if, if that relies on me filling out that form, it ain't happening. Not I mean, it's been on my desk. It's, it's still on my desk, but it will remain on my desk probably until the end of time. Whereas again, not that interviews are the solution for everything, but if they just got me on the phone and asked me the first couple key things to get started, or, oh, oh, here's a whole other <laughs> other thing. I, uh, I once worked with a client, I once had a client who's a financial planner, and he worked with older, usually older women who whose husbands had passed away and they were, you know, it was, it was mainly helping them. They often didn't know a lot about their finances or, right. or if, if they had mm-hmm. enough or didn't have enough. And their biggest concern was like, am I going to be okay? Do I need to change my lifestyle? Like they were trying to understand all of that. And he was really good with working with those people. And so in addition to regular financial planning, he would, he would have help them establish what their budget is. So they would know, is this enough? What has to change? Whatever. But he started off saying, provide me all these things or, or here's, you know, wh- what's your budget? And they didn't know. Right, that's and exactly their problem. That's exactly their problem. And, and like, oh, okay, now I have to go find, find, uh, you know, documents from my mortgage or know what my B. So my BGE bill is my electric bill, whatever. So what he started doing was he had a couple of his, um, like these marketing interns that were working with him for the summer. He started sending them out and they would just go to the house and they would help the they would they would side by side help them either look through files or look things up on the internet if they had to call they would help them call and work cuz they they didn't know how to look things up on the internet sometimes but so they facilitate you know that word facilitate means to make things easier they would facilitate the saying yes process and that to me is the magic that for some reason i think a lot of service providers just miss. No, I, I think that's right. I mean, there are a couple of things that you said. Your client that was dealing with the, the financial planner that was dealing with this community, he was looking at it and he realized that the point of disengagement or overwhelm was right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. If he says, okay, get me you know, these 26 documents and then I'll make it easy for you, whatever. Right. It's not going to happen. You're just like, like, did you miss the part where I don't know about the 20? 20- right. I don't know what the Right. They're feeling lost and overwhelmed yes. and scared. And so you're going to give them A more project. stuff and yeah. and stuff on an unfamiliar territory. So they're yes. going to be even more lost, more overwhelmed, more scared. And similarly, when, you know, you're, you're feeling uh, you're looking for more insurance, you're busy and, and all this stuff, and you're given this this thousand page questionnaire and it's mm-hmm. just not going to to happen. I think it's really important to look for where is the point of disengagement? Yeah. You know, and um and sometimes that's in the middle of the process. Sometimes mm. you start with because it, it can be like a roller coaster. You know, maybe you have what what is really uninformed optimism. You know, you start out this thing and, oh, it's going to be really easy. And so you're, you approach it with a great deal of energy because it's uninformed optimism. But at some point you become informed about how long a path this is or Mm -hmm. what you have to do or what the pain points might be. And you've got to have something that gets you through that valley yeah, so that you can get back to informed motivation or informed optimism. And so there's in that valley is a point of disengagement. And for different businesses, it's different things. You know, you had mentioned copiers. And I remember a couple years ago when I was looking for a copier, and one of the people that I talked to gave me nine different alternatives. And it's a it's a copier to me. Mm-hmm. You, I'm just looking at it going, right. it's a copier. <laughs> right. I just need, you know, color Does it and copy? black and white. Does it copy? Right. And, you know, one of them can probably, I'm sure, do a 130 page perfect bound book. Mm-hmm. That's not what I need it for. Right. But right. there are nine different things. Or, or and, uh, even better, but, but again, back to the interview thing, like, like interview me enough that that we know I'm not going to accidentally get the, I mean, because for instance, if you did, if bound copies was one thing that you absolutely needed, then you only want to, you know, you would want to make sure that was in there, but otherwise, no, no, don't, don't offer me all those things. If I don't, if I don't need those things. We had talked about this and this getting a little bit farther from what I wanted to talk about um, in response, (laughs) but we had talked about this story where a grocery store had put out like 12 different samples of different kinds of jellies and jams and whatever. At one table. Are you sure that was me? Yes, I'm sure. Is that your other podcast? Yeah, it's. (laughs) I don't remember this story. Go ahead. (laughs) Um, So they had put out a table with 12 different samples of jellies and jams, you know, obviously because they want people to taste it, become entranced by this, and buy this stuff. And they had 
a crowd there. I mm -hmm. mean, people were really, you know, they were sampling this, sampling that. People were laughing, whatever. It was great. And in another part, they just had um, a table with three and they were kind of for sale. Well, the table for three sold a ton more hmm. because people became overwhelmed with the choices. Right. They had, it's like the at, Denny's menu. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, God. But at the, at the table with 12, they could sample, they could look, they could compare, whatever, but they never made a decision. Yeah, yeah. At the one with three, they did. I wanted my copier guy to say, okay, look, you're a law office. This is really what I figure you need. Here are a list of other features right. that you can pick one or two if you think you need those. But this is really where your wheelhouse yeah, is. Yeah. Give me three. Fine. There, the there's cost. a, um, I, I might have already even said this phrase, but um, somewhere along my business growing up years, someone said the smartest thing to me, which was, which was the confused mind says no. Like if you make it confusing, like yes, if you, that's exactly if, right. if there's more to figure out, if it's like, cause this is exactly the process that happened to me about 12 times in the past three weeks, I would have this, I would hit this wall of holy, I won't make Tom edit out what I was about to say. Um, holy cow, I have to, I have to shift something. I have to make some kind of substantive move that makes something better here. Which thing will I pick? Ooh, I'll pick this thing. I'm going to get a person for this. I reach out. I am motivated. I am a, I am a, I'm a sold yes. Like I'm ready right. to go. I know what the pricing is. I'm a yes. And, and I go there and then I would hit this place where I either wouldn't understand what the options was and, there, and options were, and there was no one to talk it through with. And sure, I could just find their number and call them, but it, it, it's just so interesting. And then I'm like, uh, you know what? This is now more involved than I have time for right now. So I'm going to have to go. Or, or you know what? Interestingly, sometimes, and this is terrible to admit, sometimes I was doing it on my phone in a place where I couldn't call because it really shouldn't have been on my phone. You know, I'm like sitting mm -hmm. at a some sort of thing where I'm playing around on my phone and I shouldn't be. And, and so, you know, I thought, Oh, I could solve this little problem. And then it becomes more involved, more impossible than I had bargained that 10 minutes that I thought was going to be enough to just get this thing started. And, um, I, I almost feel like there should, everyone should have a button on that same page that says, I don't have time for this. Please call me. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't understand your questions. Please call me. And it should be like the panic button that, that kicks you out of their typical onboarding system and just makes it easier. Cause I'm already yeah. sold. <laughs> no, that's, that's definitely right. And first of all, I love the, the confused mind says no. Um, and just going further than that, um, Silence is often a no. I'll get mm -hmm. to it later. Is a no. The the, the it, survey. Those on your are desk all things. No. No. It's a no. It's a no. And so what I think we're coming to um, is not only clarity, of course, and identifying the points of disengagement. But this is what I wanted to get back to before <laughs> I veered left into my jelly table story, right. um, which I still contend you have never told before. But I told you. Okay. I told you before. Well, not on. Okay, whatever. Okay. Just got um, it. <laughs> Jody's got her agree to disagree face. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you later mm -hmm. off air about this. Um, but, but I think one of the points where we get back to your hoarder story is that in so many endeavors, what I think we really need to concentrate on is where can I give my ideal client the quick victory? Mm. Just the really fast, before they even yeah. get too deep into this, before they have to invest more of their time, more of their mental real estate, whatever it happens to be, where is the quick victory so that they all of a sudden see, oh, now I see the value that in going for, if I could get this done in the first X, yeah. imagine, you know, then their mind takes over and imagine what I could do if I actually went through this whole yeah. thing. What's the quick victory? Now with your financial plan or the quick victory is some clarity. They send somebody yeah. over, he can, th those people can help find this on the internet, find this in the files, at least put together the the universe of stuff right. that goes into decision making. And, and if it goes to that most victory. basic level of budget, even if they never worked with them, that's already a win. It's already worth the price of admission just because right. now you actually know what your what your um you know your nut is for the monthly, you know, spend or something. Like even that is a small win. And that creating a like any kind of service in an industry, I think if you can create a small win that's, that's not, you know, you're not trying to fix everything, but just some kind of something that gives them a taste of what your value is. You, you earn more than just that yes in their business. It, it's like you've checked a box where it, for me anyway, and I'd be curious if you feel the same way, if that box gets checked really early on, 
because whenever somebody says yes, their mind is still in, gosh, I hope I don't regret this. Mm -hmm, Gosh, I hope I didn't make the wrong decision. And if early on you can check that box, it's not that you stop paying attention to whether there's value, but like, whew, okay, okay, it wasn't a terrible decision. And and that small win, I like that. Like finding a way that there's that there's a there's a confirmation that this was not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to give you an idea, I um, as you know, I've been working on these, putting on these online courses, and mm-hmm. so. I was told about this uh, organization that teaches you how to do an online course. Now, there are a number of them. There There are quite a few of them. But this one offered three hours free. It was three one-hour sessions free. And although that's an investment in terms of time, Mm -hmm. it's not an investment in terms of money. And yes, I had to send them my email, but I could always unsubscribe if they started spamming me, even though they said they wouldn't. And Mm -hmm. and they didn't, but you you could always unsubscribe. So I did invest the time. And in the first hour... While I expected the sales pitch at the end, but in the first hour, there was one nugget there that had never occurred to me in terms Mm -hmm. of building this course. And I thought, and it was valuable. And I thought, oh, that, of course, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. I should do that. And so I started thinking, now I knew that they were going to try and sell me their whole large module thing. um, And they did. And it, and it was several thousand dollars to go through their full course. But now I had the point of saying, well, wait a minute. They, that one thing that they taught me right at the beginning, a, that was worth my time and B kind of seems like they know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, so I had a reason, I at least had more faith that if I made this monetary investment, this investment of time, there was a good reason right. and to I, do it. And I think it's a it's a it, it's a really careful um a careful balance. Cause I know when I first started, and I know a lot of you know, coaches or consultants or whatnot start with this where it's really easy to give too much away early sometimes. Mm-hmm. And and because I think the danger of it is if you make all their pain go away in the moment or enough that uh, enough of what they're feeling right in the moment, then they actually think they're like, Oh, okay. I feel better. Thanks so much. And off, off they go. But so, so I don't necessarily recommend that. Not only is it bad for sales, but I also think it's a disservice to the person because they feel like their problem solved and it's not, it's, it's just, you've solved what's hurting most right now. Um, but it's like giving giving them a, a pain pill that maybe takes that away, but they still have, like a problem with that knee or something. Mm -hmm. But in between those two things, you have to take some of the pain away. You have to show them that you have something that will, for me, it's just this sense of relief. Like even, even just, it's interesting. I, um, I did use one personal assistant software thing for a while one time and it was the exclusively used text. But in, and part of the reason I used it was instead of, Instead of having to fill out a bunch of forms or get them all the information, um, I needed them to schedule my kid's doctor for something. And they said, what's the name of your your kid's doctor? And I told them. And I thought that they were going to say, and what's the address? And what's the phone number? And I was like, oh, because I, I, I didn't have time to go look that up right then. Yeah. And like 30 seconds later, the person typed back, oh, is that this doctor's office on this street? And I was like, oh. <sighs> and all you have to do like, is say, yes, yes, <laughs> that's him. And I didn't have to go. And I thought that effort of like, that said to me, this is somebody who's going to proactively think about how to make things easier for me. And that was it. I was sold. Like I, I went, now I ended up having other problems with him, but that's not the point. That's not the point. <laughs> that's not the point. And that detracts from your story, but that's okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, because no, it doesn't. Because, you know, what we're talking about here is making it easier for somebody to say yes and and then you know our next episode could be about how you have to keep earning that yes you going do. forward. You, absolutely you do. always have to keep earning that yeah. yes, but you don't even. That's the point. You don't get the opportunity to earn to keep their yes if you make it impossible to get their yes in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I I see that all the time. In fact, I um I hear that from. Uh, from clients, this is why I don't want to be anybody's first lawyer. Mm. I want to be, you know, at least their second or, or whatever. Because do you want um, to be their rebound lawyer? I want to be the- their rebound lawyer. I do because <laughs> when they call me, I'll I'll be happy to I'll be happy to talk about their problem, go into whatever it is. Uh, because a lot of people in my profession, as soon as somebody calls, say, "Okay, well, let me send you the engagement letter. Let me send you this. Let me send you mm. that." And so there's you're you're erecting these hurdles before somebody even gets a taste of what you can do. Right. And 
Um, that's never been our, our business model. It, it's so refreshing when you give somebody a reason. They're like, oh, thank God I called you. Yeah. I, I'm, I do want to do business with you. Thank God I made that decision. Yeah. But there has to be that point of engagement that, mm-hmm. that um, you know, the small victory right at the top where somebody goes, oh, that's why I called you. Yeah, but, you know. I, I think of, and I think we've probably used this metaphor before, but, um, and and if we have, then this is officially where curling is the most useful in the world, I think, because it's a bizarre sport. But you know how in curling, there's, oh, yes, that, yes. <laughs> there's that person who runs ahead of whatever that thing is yeah, called, the, the big stone, thing, and yeah. they brush the ice so that it's as smooth as possible so that it can just slide on forward. That's what it feels like a lot of businesses need is when I am already decided that I am headed towards your thing. I mean, think about think about for a second how much time and energy businesses put into getting their name out there and social media and branding and thought leadership and networking and all these things to get people into the top of their funnel. Here I am like dead set driving myself straight towards your sales right. shut conversation. Shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> Seriously, I am in a shut up and take my money mood. And you erect a brick wall right in front of of, of me trying to, to say yes. Right. And, and instead, every business needs a brusher. <laughs> So that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. (laughs) That is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at SHMS Podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'd like to thank our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best Loving of ways. Lovingly snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So, so a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing just a little bit of everything. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. (laughs) Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story. 